Well, we said we would go just by motoring and we, we wouldn't sail, but look at this, we are sailing. Not in a good condition. We have the engine just, it's heating up. I have no idea what it is. I'm Roberta. And I'm Duca. And together we are on the mission of bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Monday for a new episode. Good morning. Good morning. You seem cold. Yeah, it's nine degrees Celsius today. So now we're gonna do some cheese bread. That's a Brazilian thing, I guess. Yep. On the oven, so we can warm it up the <laughs> boat while we wait for the mechanic. Yeah, the mechanic is the main reason why we came for to this spot that's inside the yacht club because he has a store here inside, so it's easier for us to do the first maintenance of Kelly. The funny thing is, outside on the ocean, today and yesterday and the day before the winds are really really strong but it seems like there's just a bubble without wind just on the island we are now we're just enjoying the moment why the mechanic doesn't show up let's fix something that broke during the trip this came loose and we lost this chaco that goes right here Yep, we have a boom back. Pretty good. Can you use the boom now? Yeah, all we need is wind now. Yeah, we're not gonna have wind for uh, two days probably, and then we might have some wind again. And then we go, we can go try the main sail one more time. The reason why we are hiring him to do the first maintenance of Kelly is because we are not allowed to do ourselves because the engine is under warranty for two years. Yeah. That means that this maintenance need to be done by a company that is specialized in Yammer and he's gonna do the maintenance and then we are free to go first time that I went to the supermarket and needed to get the dinghy to get here <laughs> now I need to clean all this and put inside the boat <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> while you keep editing I'm gonna prepare some food <laughs> good news, that's good, I'm excited. <laughs> At least we did a lot of things in town already. We started the change of the document of the boat that we needed to do. We already did the maintenance of the engine that we needed to do. What else? We got some mail that we need to get. Let me tell them one cool thing. As you guys know, we are really good partners with Zentrex for all the solar panels, for the charger, controllers. And for a long time, Zentrex was asking us to try their new inverter charger. And we always said that we don't really need right now because the one we have, we're really happy with it and we don't need to replace it right now. But we had an idea. While we were in Guarujá, Reginaldo helped us so much. And once he asked us if we could talk to Zentrex because he is refitting a motorboat that has a 12 volts charger and a 24 four volts charger on the same boat and they were both old and not working anymore and he asked if we can contact Zentrax to try to fix that unit we had a better idea Zentrax wanted us to try their new inverter charger what I talked to Zentrax is if you give me the new one that you want us to try to see if we like and to see how it works can I give as a gift the old one to Reginaldo because the old one's not even old it's just like one year old and it's working perfectly and they said, yes, of course. And also, as he needs a 24 volt charger, we are also gonna send him a standalone charger. This is a true charger two. That means 30 amps, 24 volts charger, standalone. This is our new unit. And also they sent two controllers, that's pretty good. So one for the 24 volt charger, and this one for the inverter charger. Also for Reginald. Also for Reginald. Anything we needed, he helped us. So. We hope this is a good thank you gift. Hope you like it. But now let's go back to work. <laughs> you and I. <laughs> How long is this gonna take? I have no idea. I'm really hungry. Oh, there's one thing I'm gonna show you guys. One thing that's so cool because right now we are on the morning boat right outside of the ad club. Every morning, every single morning, there are a lot of optimists, a lot of little kids just doing classes, sailing classes around. So cool. So for the next few days, we're gonna have some northeast wind. 
that's gonna get better and better and better and we want to use this wing to sail so the idea now is to wait a little bit longer and use this wing to go back to the same place we were before next to my dad's house so instead of motoring against the wind to go to the north and then going south with the next wind we're just gonna use the wind to go south already because later on we're gonna have south wind so we can go north when we have south wind we're gonna we don't have any other place to be so we're gonna follow the wind from now on I have just remembered that we forgot the main ingredient of this food this. today we are gonna use a I don't know how many years this is 12 years plus whiskey 25. plus 20 something <laughs> it's like 37 oh yeah that's funny that's what the former owner left What's this milk? Whiskey. Smells good. Good. That's life. You know, good food, some serious someone that you love next to you to me. Enjoy. What are we doing today? We are getting ready to move. Yeah, we're gonna go sailing today. We finally have some good wind. Check this out. We have wind. For real, we are gonna try the sails today. That's just, yeah, can win. But now I need to call the dinghy from the yacht club to help us with the mooring bowl because we have like three lines and it's gonna be much easier with the his support. So let's do it. Bravo 20, bravo 20, beleiro odd na escuta, câmbio. Pode pedir pro vai e vem vir aqui me dar uma força só para soltar o cabo da poita? Positivo, Akami. Next step, we need to message the yacht club to make sure they know we are leaving and where we are going and everything. Done. Ding is arriving. Time to go. I guess now we are free. The wind's really strong. There's a rock and a sandbag, so we need to go in between. Ready to open the sails? Yeah. We are sailing! <laughs> We're doing 6.8, that's pretty good. Oh yeah! Woo! Look at this! True wind, 23 knots. It's amazing! A lot better than we planned! So now we are gonna take off the Genoa, we're gonna roll the Genoa, we're gonna start the engine, we're gonna go against the wind and we are gonna raise the main sail, then we go downwind again and open again the Genoa. Is that a plan? Sounds like a plan? Let's do it. main sail up it was a little bit of work because we have one reef on the cockpit now and one reef on the mess and sometimes the lines get twisted if we had both of them here on the cockpit it would be easier but we didn't manage to get away of bringing both here oh, big step one step at a time so now let's open the other sail Yeah, I think this wind position is just not helping much to have the Both Genoa up. <laughs> yeah, because it's just creating a shade on the Genoa, the mainsail. So I think we're just gonna keep the mainsail for now. What do you say? Yeah, I 
Minseo because we're not getting any speed. It was a great day to try the sails, to put them up, down, up, down, <laughs> yeah. to one side, to the other side. The only way to get better at and to learn about the boat and get to know for real the boat is just time, you know, like today we managed to sail with the head sail and then with the main sail only, the main sail with the head sail and now we found out that in this position it's better for us, it's more comfortable with just the head sail yeah. and we make the same speed or even more. So And I think uh, the Genoa is much better to open because we have all the lines on the cockpit so it's pretty easy to, to open, you can just and push the, the lines. Just inside. The one problem we have with the main right now is that the main has two reefs and one of the reefs we didn't manage to bring to the cockpit yet so every time you try to put the sail up or down the line that is on the mast gets stuck so you need to run to the mast and run back, run to the mast run back and we, we're still getting I, used I, to it. I think when we install the autopilot this can be better because I can stay in one place looking the other place yes. and this is gonna be easier. A lot easier And actually. I think the, the other thing that I prefer using the Genoa's instead of the mainsail is because when you when you need to put the mainsail up and down you need to go against the wind and then you can stay there for a while. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Genoa, the system, the furling system is working just Flawless. It's just so good. I can row the Genoa anytime I want, and that makes life so much easier. Yeah, it's it's so much fun to be able to now, for real, start practicing and getting to know the boat. Today was a good practice because it was the day that I spent most of the time on the helm, and Duca was trimming the, the lines and everything. And for me, it was great. But I'm a little bit sore already. <laughs> I think we need to install the autopilot really soon. <laughs> we will. We need to suffer a little bit first and then we get, you know... No, we need to know the boat so it's good not to have the autopilot. Yeah, because if you just have the autopilot, you never get to know the boat. Now we don't have the autopilot, we get to know the boat and then just like, now we're free. Just press the button and go hang out. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> We're gonna stop at my dad's house for lunch today. And also to wash some clothes. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. time. <laughs> it's time. Yeah. This is our home port. Basically, my dad moved to this place that's all the way in the south of the island and the the ocean's right in front of his house. So <laughs> it's a really good place for us to anchor the boat, to have lunch sometimes and, and to wash clothes. Yeah, and it's protected from a lot of wind, so it's a yeah. nice place to sleep as well. We are getting closer to the channel, so we need to put the genoa down. Not down, we're gonna roll up the Genoa. Roll up the Genoa. <laughs> We are installing our new inverted charger. Just a plug and play. Uh, we just, it's exactly the same size, just a little bit thicker. So we just have to use the same wires. Just need to unhook the wires and hook the new inverter charger and hook the wires again. Mm -hmm. I did it. Time for the fun part. This new unit is a 150 amps charger. That's a huge charger and it's a 3000 watts inverter so it's bigger than this one in power so this is the new, new unit this is the old unit now we need to manage to put this back the wires are pretty much the same even the ground is on the same place i think we are gonna be good to go i'm gonna do that you don't need to see me doing yoga inside of the cabinet when it's ready i'm gonna show you in place so the new unit is installed in place this is a mppt controller mppt controller and that's our inverter charger for now because we have no time right now to replace the wires because the wires need to be thicker in order to have more power we are gonna keep lower the settings we can configure it and have just 100 amps and 2000 watts when we want to install bigger uh, appliance for example electric stove and oven if we want we can get thicker wires and then we just configure it to 3000 watts and if we want we can configure it to 150 uh, amps charger but for now that's how it's going to stay 
and also when we do all the rest of the electronics we are going to connect the NIMEA 2000 network on this one because this one is main for both so it has a NIMEA 2000 connection so we can control through the sharp plotter it's pretty cool ready to move yeah we have a forecast of really really strong winds south winds tonight and in order to move the anchorage we're going to go just a little bit far north we need to cross a sand bank right now would be much better to wait like another two hours for the north wind to die down and go to the anchorage with no wind but if we do that we have no clearance to cross the sand bank so we need to go all the way to the channel and it's gonna be like one extra hour to get there i prefer the wind instead of yeah we got a little bit of wind we cross the channel on the high tide that's right now and it's all good the thing is here is a really nice place to sail it's not a really nice place to, to leave to <laughs> leave aboard yeah leave aboard you sail like 10 percent of the time yeah. not 90 percent <laughs> of the time and here is just crazy so that's why we're trying to do everything we want to do here and then we you know, yeah. start going north because north I think is going to be much more comfortable to leave aboard. We need to follow the chart really carefully and hopefully we won't hit a sand bank. On the move! We just got into the second channel, the smallest channel. Now we're gonna cross a small channel that's deep and then we have another sand bank. Tiny one but really shallow one. Right now it's a really high tide so I think it's gonna be okay. After we pass the sand bank we can turn right and just go straight to the anchorage. All good. We're almost about to enter the sand bank just so we keep an eye on it. Yeah, it seems we are out. Yes, we did it, second time. We are lucky. Five meters now. Yeah, so that means we are in the second channel. Here, and we are going to go through this small channel all the way to hide here. Good. We know we could go sailing and it would take so much longer to get just right there but the problem is today's mission is not to sail it's just to hide from the cold front and if we do that we might get the cold front so you know safety first so where are you going to go? I don't know if you can see but we're going to go right behind that tick right there just by motoring and we, we wouldn't sail but look at this we are sailing not in a good condition we have the engine just it's heating up I have no idea what it is maybe the impeller. Uh, right somewhere impeller might be the impeller I'm not sure and I'm not sure what to do now if we go back maybe we go back to where we were with sail and we anchor by sail and then tomorrow we are gonna have a we're gonna just gonna have to wait and see <laughs> let's go because we're not gonna make it all the way there against the wind and the tide is really strong Yeah, we are trying to use a little bit the engine just so we can anchor. Yeah, we were going back instead of going yeah, forward with the sail. I, I don't understand. We need to do the maintenance with the authorized guy and that's who did the, the maintenance. So there's nothing we can do because otherwise we will lose the, the, warranty. the warranty. But now the temperature is good. I don't get it. I really don't. See. But once we start using the engine for like five minutes, it's getting hot so just a more explanation why didn't we at least try to go upwind to the next anchorage the problem is we needed to cross the sand bar and in order to cross the sand bar we need the high tide and back then we were on the exactly high tide that means that if we try to go upwind and we give up if we decide to try but we find out that we cannot go upwind enough because we had a lot of current against and a lot of wind against 
and the space on the channel to go tech and tech and tech is not that wide and we cannot put our center board down that means without the center board it's really hard for us to go upwind with our boat because our boat is just flat on the bottom without a center board down that means we cannot go upwind and if we try to go anyways and we realize that we cannot do it there is no way back to go to the place we wanted to anchor because we would need to go around the channel and in order to do that we need the engine without the engine we it's not possible for us to go all the way to the end of the channel and come back to the other side of the same bar that means it's a tough decision because we either commit and that's it or we need to cross right away straight away the same bar we decide to cross the same bar because if we decide to go upwind and then it didn't work we would be in trouble then because right now wasn't big trouble we just crossed the same bar and it's fine it's easy to get to the anchorage but if we need to go through the channel around the channel then would be a huge problem because in the end of the channel there are rocks and there is the entry of the channel and then we need an engine to go back otherwise it's just not possible well sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do time to check the engine now that it's a little bit colder what i think happened i told the mechanic when he replaced the water on the heat exchanger that we have the hot water tank higher than the engine and that means that we need to wait until the water goes up and then we need to fill up more and he's like no it's fine it's already filled it's already filled and today before we left I checked the water here but I forgot to check the water here I should have checked the water here because I almost guarantee you that once I open this up we are low on water here and that means that the sensor the heat sensor it's not on the water and if the heat sensor is not on the water it shows a higher temperature because it needs to be on the water I'm 90% sure that's the problem and if that's the problem we will never do that mistake again because now we we won't do it again learning on the hard way <laughs> yeah but it was a good was actually a good practice because we managed to keep calm to open the sails to sail as much as we could to let the engine cool down and in the end we could motor a little bit to anchor because was the the wind is not steady here inside of the bay to be able to anchor on the right place on say under sails of course you can but it's much harder so we let the engine cool down a little bit and once we got closer to the anchorage we start the engine and we managed to get the anchor down and everything good today was the first time i'm proud that we used the genoa the small one and we were able to tech many times in order to get here and that was really good because we yeah that was a good experience <laughs> some bad come for good you know like it's it's a good practice in boat life the engine is gonna break that's just the way it is even though it's brand new sometimes it happens I might need more than half liter. I think this was the problem. I don't think I'm sure this was the problem. We called the mechanic to see what could be the problem and I think we were right. The heat exchanger was the problem. It was dry. We already put half liter of coolant plus one liter of water. By the way, the coolant we use was like concentrated coolant that we you need to mix with water, so it's fine. I'm just mixing with water. It's not mineral water that you cannot use. This is just tap water that we can use. This is a way of taking the air off. We should have filled up more the water on the heat exchanger before we left. Living and learning. Never do that again. Let's start the engine. So don't do the same. <laughs> now, let's wait and see what happens. But it's good, we're gonna charge our batteries. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not good. But <laughs> sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Now we're just gonna monitor here. Okay. In, in here and see what happens. Successful mission. <laughs> oh good. So the problem was exactly that. The water went to the hot water tank and create a bubble of air here so the sensor was on the air instead of on the water on the coolant and that means it shows it's heating it up but it's not it's just because it's out of the coolant now we fill it up we left on for one hour and the temperature just stays steady but you're good to go but that means we won't go to the other anchorage today we might go tomorrow really early in the morning so we get there before the south wind good thing we charged our batteries there now 13.4 the lithium ones good morning 
it's about time oh. to move again. Now it's for real. The engine's not gonna act on us today. <laughs> yeah. Even though it seems really calm, it's it might change in two hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you know like the calm before a storm. Indeed. It might be that. It might not, but it might be so in that case, let's go. Let's move. Let's move. Thank you. second attempt but we made it it's good Kelly behaved well today that's so good the problem was not Kelly it was the hot water tank that yeah. took all the water from Kelly you know like just like fighting for water and left no water for Kelly but it's all good now we're on the anchorage the south wind still didn't turn show to up. south it didn't show up yet <laughs> once it turns to south we have a huge mountain right in front of us to protect us that's pretty good Just following the wind, now it just went down, but it seems like the wind is already switching to south. But we cannot feel here. But I got a, a message from my stepmom that is where we used to be, and there the, the wind, wind is wind already strong. <laughs> yeah, it's already. I don't know if you can see, but it's already. You can put the video for them. You can see from here. <laughs> yeah, you can tell that there the the wind is already switching. And it's much stronger than here because I think we are much better protected. We had gusts of 15 knots now, that's not much, but we could not barely tell that was blowing. Here we go, now we are facing the beach already, that means it's coming from the south. Now we just need to wait for that to cross. The good thing is the highest the wind is going to be today is going to be during the day. That's much better, you know, just to be able to see everything and to just follow the, the wind passing by you can tell yeah now let's enjoy this moment if you ask me what was the most different thing for us since we moved aboard the boat I would definitely say the nature it's amazing how different life is when you live 24 7 on a sailboat when you live in an apartment or in a house sometimes you even forget that there is rain that there is wind you don't even need to pay attention to these things because you're just safe inside of your house in a boat it's so different Every single day we need to check the forecast. Every single day we need to go outside and look around and check the clouds, the birds and everything because they tell us things. This day for example we could tell that the birds could feel the change on the wind before we did. They could tell that the cold front was actually coming and that was so amazing. It seems like the birds were communicating between them. It seems like they all knew something was coming and that they need to get protected because the cold front was actually coming and that's so awesome. And it feels like it's a life that we learn a new thing every single day. Of course it's a challenging life. You need to move, you need to get protected from the wind, but at the same time you get to learn so much about the nature and that's so cool.